The idea behind the entire Green Lantern thing, and this kind of sprung from Blackest Night, it's part of their motto. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. Let me explain, because Josh is one of the people that doesn't know anything about this. Alright, so this idea is, there is an emotional spectrum where each of the base emotions is represented by a light of color. And the one that everyone has known for years is the Green Lanterns, which stands for willpower. Okay? But it gets revealed later on that there is one for each color of the Roy G. Biff spectrum. Um, red stands for rage. Orange stands for avarice or greed. Yellow stands for fear. It's also the color of the Sinestro core. S Sinestro has his own core of fear mongering people. And in fact, when you get a green ring, the first thing it tells you is that you have the ability to overcome great fear. Um, Blue stands for hope. Hope has the ability to supercharge will. Will is stronger with hope. Uh, this stands for compassion. Compassion has the ability to channel any other of the colors or emotions. And this is supposed to be violet, although it's pink. It's pink because they had to fit a character to it. But it's supposed to be violet, even though it looks pink. And that stands for love. Love is perhaps the most complicated emotion the members of this core, known as the Star Sapphires, are all women. Um, With emotional problems. Of course. <laughs> but it's, That's redundant. they have <laughs> both stood on the side of good and evil. They have both been jealous and angels, basically. Um, so I'll give you a basic idea of that. Black stands for death, the absence of color. White stands for life. Life is the culmination of every single one of these emotions, therefore it is every color combined. It is also the original entity from which all these others sprang. Life splintered into all these various colors. Um, Including death or no? Death existed before life. Before there was ever anything, there was nothing. So death is the return to the natural state of nothingness. Mm, natural state is a subjective matter in any theory, really. All right, but we can get into the original our, state, then. It, we, we can get back to that later. I just want to give you guys time to generate ideas and all that shit. Black Knight started by everyone that had ever been dead, ever, came back to life. And what made it so cool is that there were super-powered zombies, they were intelligent zombies, and they fed off emotional energy. Hmm. So there was... And, and coming up to this event, they had killed off some pretty major characters. Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, there was an alternate universe Superman that had died on this earth. And when this black ring came down to register an emotional tether, it would say your name and the planet you're from, and then you would rise from the grave. Mm -hmm. What made this event so epic was that they took 30 years of Green Lantern lore, brought it all together in this very neat storyline. Brightest State fucked it up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but they made it make sense. This character, Necron, is a living, or a tangible, I guess you would say. He's not a manifest. Sense. A manifest of death. But because he has no form, he only exists by attaching himself to the heart of somebody who's already dead. This character name is Black Hand. But he also says, all these people that have ever died, Necron comes back and says, I have let you return to life so that I can use you again. So it actually makes it make sense. The ridiculousness of the fact that so many people die and come back to life. Marvel is still living in the Skrull universe. Their excuse for people dying and coming back frequently is the Skrulls. Mm -hmm. And if you can't figure out a reason, it was a fucking Skrull. Yeah, it fucks a squall. Shapeshifter. They also have the ability to, with their technology, they can genetically modify themselves to duplicate the powers of whoever they're duplicating. And psychological programming to make them actually think they're the person they are. So, Scrolls is a cop out. That's so their way Superman's of Superman's like been dead forever. No, Scrolls are Marvel. Yeah, Scrolls are Marvel. Yeah, Scrolls are the Marvel. Now, universe. DC actually made this make sense. Like, we've killed off all these guys, but it was part of some master plan. It wasn't just random, someone just randomly fucking comes back, no! Nope. And that crowd's like, I need to use you again. I've allowed you to come back to life. I've returned you. And that's what these characters, these people here, all get affixed a ring because they were all at one time dead. And they use Batman. Bruce Wayne had died, supposedly. Deathstorm was badass. Love yes, he's in there. I want to explain the philosophy to you. my ideas. I want to go to philosophy. Part of this, I wanted to apply the theories of 
this to the real world. One of the implications of the fact that each of these lights represent an emotion is the fact that emotion can have some kind of a tangible physical power. And the question is, does it? In our world, can emotion have any kind of a tangible power? If not, what kind of power do you think it might have? Can right. it affect things in what way? Don't answer the questions. I'm giving people time to think because I'm going to put something on. I have a question. What? Yeah, now, when you say tangible force, do you mean tangible in, such as the entities, it's tangible in itself, or tangible in the sense of uh, actions performed by people? Uh, well, the definition of tangible, I would think, is something with form that has you the ability touch. to be physically sensed. Well, you said, can an emotion have a tangible form, you know? Like, yeah. Hate me punching him in the face, that's a tangible form okay. of an emotion. Um, but answer the question yourself. That's part of the debate. We'll get to that in a minute. Second, one of the other implications is that these are all based emotions. Now, of these, now granted, life and death is not really an emotion, but an extension of them. Um, these seven emotions, the implication is that they're all the base emotions, that every other emotion, emotion is an extension of those. For example, not every emotion is represented here. What about guilt? What extension would that be of this? Greed, yes. Um, avarice. That's actually Greed represented. And avarice, not the same. Uh, lust, is that an emotion? How is that represented here? Is that a kind of love? I don't know. Probably be lust would be yes, greed would be and love. Yeah. Um, there's actually like psychologists, sociologists, and philosophers have debated this for years. What are the base emotions? Are there certain emotions that are which every other one comes from? I don't think that is a big shit. Uh, <laughs> is every emotion just basically I don't think, emotion? I think that we really, really, really love to simplify things into this is the these are the four building blocks, or these are the seven building blocks, or these are the ten building blocks, because this is a nice number that we like. I, well, in many cases, though, those simple building blocks is, in fact, what leads to other things. It's like cement. Yeah, but it's not, it's not it's not necessarily accurate in, in all these things. A lot of the times yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the times we when we decide these are the building blocks, we're actually not Okay talking to So an actual psychologist yeah. and philosophers and I will tell you my own theory mm -hmm. later, but did anyone ever think that Ryan is a spiritual person? Just random thought. Would you say I'm a spiritual person at all? Is this a rhetorical question? No, this is a serious question. Answer the question. Mm. I'd consider myself yes. a spiritual person, so probably... I do have a spiritual side. Mm. This is part of it. Personally, I think that there are a type of emotions that are base to most others. Now, it's very well that I could be missing something. And I actually found a French psychologist who I mostly agree with, mm. um, which I will discuss later. Okay. But the base emotions here, I think they got wrong. If, if I was to attribute an emotion to... Sum up, to sum up, for example, how I view you after knowing you, I would have to say it would be fear. Fear sums you up more than any of the others. Really? Yes. I disagree, but we'll discuss that later because you guys are antsy as well. I think uh, that it's... Yeah. Well, this is uh, the new 52. Is this after Sinestro comes back to the Green Lanterns? And yes. Later? That's how they ended the war of life. so fucking stupid. Uh, I don't know, I'll get into that. It I was pretty, why, no, but... it was pretty fucking epic at the end of the story. Because all this shit going on, someone, in, uh, Kronos infected the Green Lantern with Parallax. He stuck Parallax in the fucking Green, the main lantern on Oa, mm -hmm. that powers everything else. He stuck Parallax in there. And all the rest of the Green Lantern Corps was basically um, under his control at that point. Well, big whoop did you fucking do? Parallax was in the Green Lantern Corps once before. Yeah, but he uses what? it. But because of that, they all have to discard their ring and they all pick up other rings. And it ends with the ring randomly being on Sinestro. Bear in mind who was deciding. The person who decided who got the rings beforehand, it was actually an entity. It wasn't just a computer. It was Mogo. I know. Mogo doesn't survive the war of the, the, war of the ring lands. No! John Stewart gets a compassionate indigo ring and he channels death. 
and he goes all Marine on Mogo. So he has to so Why? Mogo's because so Mogo kept spitting out more fucking rings and was randomly just bringing people into the Green Lantern Corps just so there was more people in this army to go against them and every one of them kept fucking dying because they didn't know what they were doing. Poor Mogo. Alright, remember how I said I have a spiritual side? Yeah. It's actually part of something. Um, my, my form of spiritualism is just a matter of symbolism. I don't believe in the actual existence of something. I believe in the representation of something by something else. I could talk about that. Okay, anyway. Continue though. Okay? I have labeled it something called the Amalgam Mythos. And basically, I kind of stole a quote from Gargoyles back in the day, is that all legends are born of some truth, so that anything is possible at any time for no reason at all, which is also something else I don't know the source of. Not mine originally. Um, when it comes down to the emotional spectrum, it's far more complicated, but I'll bore the fuck out of you guys with it. Oh, why? Uh, now the mythos, because I kind of got a pantheon of things. And if you guys just like typed out, I'd rather read it. it yeah. I have nothing typed out. This is just notes. Yeah, we were discussing your anti-life equation earlier, and I told him about the inconsistencies in it, but I can't remember what the anti-life equation was about. Don't break that. Um, but um, this actually comes from a French psychologist. Uh, I thought I had his name now. Foucault. No. Popiol? No, Foucault was actually a sociologist, I don't know why. It starts with a P, but um, I got to thinking about, if these, uh, with the Green Lantern that started it, uh -huh. if these are the base emotions, are they right? Uh -huh. And I got to thinking, is it, what does every other emotion spring from? And the emotional spectrum and the way they're lined up, some of which I think kind of makes sense to me, and some of it doesn't. So, I, I have a, I'm over here because I'm drawing pictures. Okay. I have my own emotional spectrum. I go off the same basis of the uh, the Roy G. Biv scale, and I think that what is light to start with? Light is what is light itself. Yes, light. Energy. There you go. That's exactly what I was thinking. Light is energy. So I personally think it could be very valid to consider emotions as a form of energy. It's some kind of a chemical energy maybe in your brain. Well, yeah, there's many other ways you can... Well, let's give a fuck. Th those mm -hmm. chemicals and everything that your brain functions, those chemicals that produce those emotions, are done so through electri electrical discharges. So it is energy that triggers the emotions. And it like, so I think it's almost valid. It's symbolistic. I'm not saying they actually how to color wavelength this energy, but it's very close to saying if light is energy and emotion is a form of energy in your brain, then emotions can be some form of light. Maybe. Um, or just to... Uh, some form of energy, if, if nothing else, and they can possibly... I mean, you can also go on psychological theories that certain colors mm -hmm. bring about certain emotional reactions. Oh, but I think that's a non sequitur, because, I mean, continue. Yeah. Okay, I mean, feel free to well, it's like tell me I'm wrong, anyone. It, it's like energy, uh, cause and effect, you know, for a reaction there's an equal and opposite reaction. What does that and have to do with energy? And a lot of momentum. Well, for example, I throw this, it goes, it bounces, it continues on, all because I threw it. Well, when the electrical discharge happens that releases the uh, chemicals that produces the emotions, for example, hey, I don't like your face, so... Electrical no, energy <laughs> release. Hate is felt. Hate influences me to punch you in the face. That energy influences the world around us. It all starts from that reaction, that electrical uh, discharge and impulse, which drives us to act on that emotional energy. Okay. I just noticed a little possible mistake in mind, and we'll discuss it. I, when I refer to the emotion, to a color spectrum, I always go on a six-color spectrum, and I ignore indigo. Because I personally think indigo is halfway between two colors. It's just purple. Well, there is no there's purple. purple. Well, there has to be a reason that exists, and it's probably by it the way they originally broke it white light by putting through a seven no. is a magic number. Se seven. It doesn't exist because of the way wavelengths no. broke up when they cut light through a prism. No, and no. Uh, that's part of it. But seven is uh, is, well, a is a mentally satisfying number. Are you so whenever they made to the rainbow? spectrum colors or 
The basic the spectrum of colors. Well, the yeah. basic. It's a wavelength that didn't mm -hmm. quite fit in with the rest of them. Like it, it had is that is that true? That's what I'm. Is mm -hmm. indigo actually a separate? Because they define these base I think colors. It's a separate set of wavelengths. Which everything else is basically a in our visual spectrum. Like, cause when they came up with the with, with, with the with the, the thing, the road Rogi this thing, it was like where when the concept was came that came out, they were looking at rainbows as a thing. And I think I think primarily, this is just my opinion, uh, but it's also something that like we were talking about in um, Seven Ideas uh, a while back, um, that indigo was essentially created as a seventh color, so that so that essentially you had seven colors because six is not a mentally satisfying number. Seven is. You always think that seven wonders of the world, seven this, seven that. Seven, seven, seven. Seven's the number of the gods. You know, all these different concepts. Like you, you. Seven's one of the numbers we go to as a culture. Ten that is another number that we go to as a culture. It's a mentally be, satisfying number. That that could be uh, just you know coincidence, and people are extrapolating a bigger pattern based on coincidence. Could be that uh, whoever first saw the rainbow, you know, was in charge or was a scholar and said, hey, I see seven colors. So yeah, I always say I always go with kind of a gay rainbow, but that there are only six base colors. Yeah, because like that's the thing is like the violet is a combination of two colors that are already on the rainbow, uh, on the wheel. So, alright, so moving past the only It's an entirely colors. arbitrary color. Isn't it? And it's kind of um, going with the artistic color wheel. Uh -huh. You have primary and secondary colors. So here's a really shitty color wheel. Alright? And so I came up with, and this is based uh, actually on a French uh, French sociology. I'm telling, repeating it because she wasn't here to hear that, I think. Uh, what, what, what does this not name look like? Do you have it written down? I thought I did. And no, I'd have to look it up again on the net at some point right. in time. It's not important. No. Continue. All right. So these are the emotions I define to each one, and their interrelation is more important. Just like in my answer life equation, the interrelation of the elements of the equation are far more important than the actual equation itself. There is one actually emotion that is completely ignored in uh, the Green Lantern universe. There's, well, a couple of them actually that they completely ignore. No, it's example. There's one. Number of them. Oh wait. I still don't think and greed is an emotion. What I think are base emotions. Yeah, I don't think greed is a base emotion either. Um, but there are some that I feel are really base emotions that are completely fucking ignored. Sadness. Yeah. Sadness being one, um, joy being another, surprise. General shock mm -hmm. is an emotion. Hey, now here's how I describe it. This is going to be the most complicated one, so I'm going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Anger, fear. Sadness exists halfway between fear and anger. I can't see. Uh -huh. I don't know, maybe. Surprise exists halfway between fear and joy. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, totally. here's where you get fucked up, and this is one of the most complicated. Love lists ha exists halfway between joy and anger. <coughs> Yay, poetry! But, so could you say it exists partway between sadness, too, which would make it out of place in here? I wouldn't necessarily say love has anything to do with sadness. Sadness is probably, like, the, lot, the reaction to a loss of it. But, um... And do you think I'm right in the base emotions? Do you think I'm missing something as a base emotion? What I'm trying to say here is that these six emotions are the basis for just about every other one. Every other one is a combination of these emotions in varying degrees and tints, just like colors. Every color that ever exists is a combination of these six basic colors in various tints, shades, and combinations. Huh. Except for black, and there is something in the middle, too, which I haven't got to, which is white. I, I don't think surprise is a base emotion. But I do find it interesting how you have these laid out. Um, seeing love and fear on the opposite ends of the spectrum, and if these, uh, if love is a combination of both anger and joy in your math here, um, fear being on the other side would, of course, be the counterbalance. Therefore, when one goes out the other, it will affect everything else. Okay. What I don't tell on here mm -hmm. is hope. Am I missing it, or does it belong in one of these? I have an answer, but I want to see what you guys say. You, you know, you're looking for uh, base emotions from which all of the emotions. Yeah. Um, it is is hope a base emotion? One, 
Or is it some variation of one that already exists? And now we're going off of your list or in general? Um, both. Don't, don't consider this if you don't want. I'm asking, am I wrong? Oh, you're always wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> I would say that hope is a base emotion. I'm um, trying to think of like how you could explain hope in, in, terms, uh, in relation to what other emotions comprise hope. Um, but I don't know. I think it kind of goes more like here in general. Like mm -hmm. right? Can I draw? Yeah, go for it. Like between yeah. joy and love. No, this this whole. Do you mean it should be its own kind of in the middle? Well, yeah. if it's in the middle, then is it not the combination of two separate emotions? Two separate well, emotions. I don't know. Because because it, 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 it's surprise. It and I thought, personally, I think hope, this is going to be my definition, mm -hmm. is the anticipation of joy. Hope is well, So that it could possibly it. exist partway between surprise and joy with maybe loving it. Maybe it depends on what the hope is for. Well, that's another thing. Is well, I think hope is a means of, like, at least on a base level, a means of being able to keep yourself from from getting... But wouldn't hope be some kind of... If sadness is on your wheel, like, wouldn't happiness be also on your wheel? Yeah, that would joy. 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 Okay, Just well, a different yeah. word. Oh, yeah, you're right. And, and right. I, that's why I'm trying to say but, uh, hope is a form of joy. It is the anticipation of joy. Well, I mean, if it's, a, if it's the anticipation of... I think it's like uh, a protection, like a mental protection for yourself. It is, but... I'm, 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 I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you could break this down even further to only two categories. And okay. everything being a, um... A, a positive or a negative. Yeah. Okay, look, if you're looking that, at I think this... That's, I think that's black and white. You, you guys are looking no, at I don't this think so. I think in the terms of a real. What comes between what two? The base emotions would splinter off and different... Uh, combination of the emotions is what would create the lower ones. Would not regret be a form of fear and sadness? Yep. Sad fear. All of those. Right, but regret should not be above sadness and fear. Fear should be above that. No, no, it's a branch of. I get it. This is your base. And this base emotions mixed together is what creates the other ones. You guys are looking at this in the terms of the real. When they come together, they form this. I'm saying that that's not necessarily true. It, it, it's not in a cycle of, of balance. It, it's different emotions in a mixing pot. And yeah, I'm not saying this yeah. is a balance because, I mean, look at what this room we're in. If we consider this mm -hmm. in the symbolic representation of color, right, every color we have in this room could also be another varying combination of an emotion. You never feel anger in one certain amount. Pink might be, I mean, granted, Pink might be a light version of anger toward love. Okay, well, w the base emotion is an emotion that will can be combined with another quote-unquote base emotion to produce any of the other emotions. Either combined or in varying degrees, or, in most cases, another word for the same goddamn thing. Well, hope, then, would be a base. Uh, I don't think it is, because I think hope is a form of joy. Look at look at Descartes, for example, and not necessarily Why, hope. No, you you can say that hope is a word for expectation. So then is it an emotion you, you, or a thought? You, 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 no, you feel it. Uh, for example, anxiety. Something you fear might happen or come. Mm -hmm. Anxiety for going into a bar where there's violent people. Anxiety is another well, word for fear. Exactly. No, fear and hope combined. Hope well, being no, an anxiety is, like, there, there is fear involved. But, but hope, wouldn't hope uh, suggest a so positive and anxiety would suggest a negative? Exactly. Negative. So there's an like like expectation in the middle. Mm -hmm. Hope is the positive. Fear is the negative. Mm, yeah. Faith is not like hope that. and fear often emotion. exist in well, well, we're we're talking about faith all the time. Be because faith in itself is not an emotion, and we're looking for what creates everything. So then you just say you just counteracted yourself by saying no. If hope is a expectation, hope is not faith. faith. Faith is everything that we interact with in, in the world comes with varying degrees of faith, and since you cannot emotionally experience faith as an emotion, hope is the closest thing. We hope for things. We hope that your car is going to start to get us home. You know, we we might have anxiety. We might trust that. We might fear that the car will break down on the way home. That's a good one too. Yeah. It, it, you know? What is? He said trust. Aha! That would be like between love and hope. I think so. 
I would yeah. say between. I still want to say that hope belongs as a part of joy, as in anticipation. I, How about that? I think it goes through the whole that whole side though. I also because hope you know. like. It's do you think it's a separate one, or do you think it's a I combination think it's, of several? I don't think it's as as. I think it kind of fills in a little. No, these lines are very blurry lines. Yeah, I I think they're not straight up lines. Just like every color is never uh, one form of this color. See, one form I don't of this think color. like see, I don't think um the wheel quote unquote is set up the way you're you're looking. At. I I think Dean is a little more accurate on his side. With this, um, yeah, kind of. But also like. But he's only got four here. Right? Yeah, that, no, I, I only it's threw like up a few as an example. I actually took those from your wheel. Uh -huh. Not necessarily how I view I was using this as an example. Okay. Like, it's more there. like a mad scientist lab, and there's like a whole spectrum of like different like vials of different emotions, and then like that are all like base emotions, and then you <coughs> mix them together. And it's and it's all like, but they're never in the same amount. They're constantly fluctuating. Yeah, it's part of the reason I put this in a wheel. Yeah, because hormones. there isn't an end. It, it, there you go. Hormones, hormones, mm -hmm. and emotions. They get more complicated the older we get, right? Just like when we go through puberty, we experience mm -hmm. new things, and our brains become capable of comprehending or experiencing new emotions. Well, go back to the base. Take a uh, eight-year-old child, for example. What emotions were they uh, were they experience? The base emotions, hopeful. Or you could say joy, mm -hmm. um, hate. They learn they to get mad. Joy. They feel love for those the parents. They can be afraid. You know, th those are the base emotions. The things a small child would feel before learning about in-depth concepts or uh, getting puberty, where the brains are adapting. You know. Can you grow. say a new? Okay, so you're saying the new child is born with these base emotions and it learns um, the variations. Mm. And the subtlety I think grows. I mean, yeah. it's all chemical. Because for, really. for example, <laughs> so is a child born with the ability for love? For, for example, uh, give you uh, yeah, yeah. Or is that a learned emotion? It has the ability. Yeah. Not well. well it has it at self. birth. Not a learned behavior, mm -hmm. but a born in. Wait, it would be a base. Look at it this way. Let's say, uh, for example, um, we have five shades of blue. Okay. Imagine five shades of blue. Uh, light, dark, green, blue. Um, That's purple. Yeah, well, five shades, you get it. Yeah. Point is, to a small child, one of five years of age or whatnot, you're going to give them all of these colors, right? Light, turquoise, cerulean. We see them as these different mm -hmm. distinctive the colors. Kid's gonna the kids are going to see blue. Exactly. So even if you get these different base emotions and they create yeah. all these various other emotions, the kid's going to see them in the broadest terms, the most simplest terms. All and these then different they learn colors the are going to be that mm -hmm. prime the emotion. So isn't that get kind of proving what I'm saying? No, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It, uh, that whatever that kid would experience in the broadest sense, those would be the at a young emotions. age, those would be the base emotions, which would be love, hate. Are these yeah. the base emotions, or are, are, am I wrong? Is what you're saying? I don't think surprise is. I don't really so think sad. I don't think sadness is either. Uh, you don't think a young child can't be sad? Well, I mean, it sadness sad, comes but from but like base from like fear. Sadness comes from something like um, pain. You know, like anticipation of pain. Hello. Loss. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And sadness is like something in itself. Yeah. Yep. Uh, maybe a couple of reactions. And you could say that. Figure out why. Anger. Okay. What do you get angry at? I mean, all of these are okay. all like reactionary, so that's, I think that's, a, that's I a weird argument. Oh, yeah, not necessarily. Uh, sadness, like to me, sadness is more like comes from. I, wa I wanted to make one quick point. Love is way I mentioned I want to make one quick point because we're moving away from it, just so I can mention it. The reason this is in a circle and not uh -huh. like this is because this to me looks like a separation, whereas uh -huh. this looks all as one thing. It's like constant, yeah. continuous, never one yeah. thing. It's like a snake biting its own tail. The, it's problem, the, same the problem with the circular it's thing is that um, it gets to the point where we're looking at this and we're we're looking at like these two are blended, so, mm -hmm. like these two can blend, but these two yeah. can't, which is not necessarily... Well, well that's the why center, we have the this center here. Blend. Yeah. 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 Once you get to the center, this is what we're missing blended. in the center where they all blend. Uh -huh. This, I think, is the basis of all emotion in the world. Mm. Well, passion. Mm. The desire 
or ability to feel at all. Look at this then. Hmm. Interchangeable puzzle pieces. Look at the emotions like that. Hmm. Hmm. So, that's my Wear blend, and that would be our white, all colors in one. Passion is the most basis of all, and before you can feel a certain thing, you must first feel the desire to feel. I disagree. I don't know. Mm. I said, like, I can feel, like, hate for someone, or, like, mild disdain for someone, without necessarily knowing passion. Uh, like, the people passion don't loosely, not necessarily in the term of having a drive for it, but you still feel. So effectively for this, is, this is the white light. Yeah. So, well, like, but you're, you're, like you're, 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 you're passion is a very yeah. intense word. The, the black light. And you're using it to mean, have you ever been super depressed? Really just feel at all. Has any of you in this room ever been super suicidally depressed? To the point that you feel absolutely nothing. Numbness. Uh, apathy. Uh, it's not yeah. apathy. Yeah. Apathy yeah. is a form something. of laziness. No, 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 it's not. No, 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 no. Or the uh, desire. Yeah. Apathy, apathy is, is. Well, I think it. You can still feel the something without doing anything. Is apathy, apathy is the lack of empathy. Apathy is the lack of the ability to care for other people or other things. Apathy comes from like. But that doesn't mean you don't have your own selfish emotions. Exactly. Apathy means you don't care. That's so then, the like. lack of emotion is not apathy. I'm saying the lack, like you're yeah. saying, is the devoid of emotion. And I'd like to feel, like to say, that those are the points in my life when I have felt mm -hmm. dead. When well, I have not felt Necron inside. Look at Necron, for example. Necron is the embodiment of the nothingness. But he hates life. He hates the intruder. He is capable of his own personal I don't motivation. I think they overplayed the part. Not I right. mean, I think I don't, you're also looking at nothingness, uh, a lack of emotion, as a negative thing instead of a neutral thing. That's another thing. Is like is that it's neither positive or negative. So the, the, like the darkest points in your life, you say you felt nothing. Well, that's bullshit because you were you were obviously feeling negative emotions, not. You know, because so if you were feeling truly really nothing, <laughs> you'd be like zen as fuck. Like, no positive, no negative, completely neutral Vulcan. in the middle. Like, well, yeah, or, or some kind of uh, Buddhist enlightenment. No. Well, I mean, even that, yeah. Like, so, I, the much enlightenment is, is more not different. completely possible for any human being ever to be completely devoid of all emotion. Bo Buddhists are right. more like, you know, joy. No matter how hard you ever try. No. To be exactly. devoid of emotion, wait, to be devoid of emotion would be to be devoid of life, then. You're thinking no, of Chinese yeah. Buddhism? Mm -hmm. That's just a different uh, thing yeah. entirely. Oh, you missed my profound comment, damn it. No, I heard it. I didn't. I oh, got it. I forgot, it because okay. I disagreed. I, I just say, yes. to be completely devoid of all emotion, then, mm -hmm. would not, wouldn't it mean to be dead? To live at all, you must feel at least something inside. No, I mean, Even if it's selfish. I disagree. There are people who are chemically neutered, like born with disabilities that where they don't feel emotion. Yeah, yeah like I don't think it's possible to not feel any single emotion. Empathy. Um, sociopaths would feel something. They would. Yeah, yeah. Just because okay. you don't have empathy and feel well, other hold on, hold on, hold on. doesn't mean you can't have your right. own feelings. It, it, it is a is a drive for power and emotion. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just to have it. Yeah. I, 
Yeah, if you want something, something just to have it, you're still lusting at it. Okay, it's like I want rocks, so I steal all the gravel out of it. It has no value whatsoever. So I just you, don't you, want you, you it. Does. You can view it has value because it depreciates it has value. No value you so you I, I just it. don't want you to have it. Yeah, exactly. And Which that, is that, so that is a it is a you not wanting no. cause for the, 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 the right. person. The hey, person let you finish this thought. You not wanting me like let's say you're stealing rocks from me, right? You not wanting me to have it is something that you're lusting after. You're lusting after yeah. my not having something. So therefore, it's this, your, your, your definition of greed is just another form of lust. Greed and avarice okay. are okay. not the same okay. thing. Your definition of avarice... Greed and avarice is greed. It's just no, two it's words not. the same word. No, anyway, it's not. Okay, so your definition of avarice is essentially the same thing as we were saying for lust. <laughs> a- avarice <laughs> is wanting to... to, to Continue possessing something, not um, the desire to have it. It's the same thing. Why? Like you, they continue. Yeah, like, like are you saying like oh, once you get something, you, it becomes avarice you, you, because you're yes. continuing to get it. <coughs> yes. no, you you no. don't want it. Mine. Yeah, that's, that's Just like in the Green Lantern Year, but mine. No one else can have it. Okay, exactly. Now so you were talking like, on a, that's in our universe a, physical thing. You're bringing up the Green Lantern as Because that is what we're supposed to talk about it in the context of the Green Lantern. Universe. Yeah, we're using mm-hmm. the ideas they inspired and applying it to our real reality. Okay. But you but cannot use a false universe. This thought is also universe. inspired from our universe. Okay. The emotions themselves but it's are right. the it's reflections fiction. of our reality. But it's a piece of fiction. All right. It doesn't matter. That's, not, that's not even, that's irrelevant to the conversation. Okay. So, <laughs> I say... <laughs> you covet, covetness and lust is the two... All right, our big thing is that we are talking about <laughs> definitions of words. Yeah, Average that's the problem. Is, uh, we are talking about average. definitions of words. Excessive or insatiable desire for wealth or gain. Not the desire to continue wealth or gain, the desire to have wealth or gain. I mean, which is this, I, would go, I would go as further to say as a cinnamon. To, a cinnamon. to, to cinnamon. want cinnamon. something. Yeah, that. I would say <laughs> the desire that's for cinnamon. something <laughs> is right the there. core... I think, yeah. Like, uh, so maybe maybe you have a really good point. Except for I would call this something different in the middle. I would, instead of passion, it, it's the word I assign to it. It does not mean that that is... Yeah, I'm thinking... His definition it. is classical. It's how I defined it. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Write what you want to write. I'm thinking... Because there's a difference between desire and passion. Oops. I'm thinking the want for something. That, des- that desire in general is what goes in the middle here. And that... All of this is another is, is are forms of reaction to desire. Is anger a desire? No, it's it's a reaction to not getting something you desire, or a reaction to um, something you know, like someone else getting something you desire. I still think anger anger is still like a very a variation of avarice. If we're talking about I would avarice. think desire in it's general is a base in form of greed, which would be in my form love. Literally See, I just don't think, I think that yeah, yeah. it's not as simple. <laughs> I think well, that um, there, there is no base. I think it's all, all emotions are essentially variant, <laughs> positive and negative of the same kind of thing. Do you think there's only two base? Oh, yeah, like when you go down, it's positive <laughs> desire versus negative desire. But love can be both positive and negative. Exactly. It's all gray. <laughs> but uh, but gray is too to loose. Gray only has so many different wavelengths where color has. Well, I mean, it's all very gray. Uh huh. Different. It's blue gray. Right? Artist, I define everything by color. My point is, it all boils down to po- a, po- a positive emotion, a positive desire, or a negative desire. Etymology of avarice versus. Woo. It says to me, avarice a word that means my measurelessness. It does not mean that's what it means. It means to me it means this. Wait, what? I mean, I think it's trying to use the root. The problem, the problem with this entire argument, semantics. Yes. It's the entire sense. argument is based on how we define each. Each of us defines these words. We all have different meanings for these words. We all have different connotations that bring, that baggage that carries with it. And here well, comes the point of what I'm trying to say. There is no answer. I, I well, do know kidding. that greed originally, when the word was created, meant uh, wanting. It had to do with food, purely with food in regards to food. Mm. That, that's gluttony. Yeah. Yeah, it's a form of greed. Yeah. yeah. So gluttony is so greed would be the neutral. Gluttony, ever. All right. I'm moving along the conversation to something else now. The, the right answer to this is there is no fucking right answer. Uh, we all have our own opinions because we all have our own emotions. 
Uh huh. Oh, Ryan. And every one of them have their own. Just papers. because we have difference in uh, our definitions and titles of what an emotion might be doesn't mean that there aren't basic emotions. Yeah. I agree. That doesn't mean there isn't. But none of us, and I don't think anyone ever will agree, what are the base emotions? How do you define an emotion to start with? What is an emotion? Something that drives you towards whatever it is you're. I know you can have like uh, you can have an emotion without having a drive. You can have an anxiety, and so uh, uh, anxieties are emotions. You can have fear, which drives drives you not something, or drives you not at all. Because anxiety stops me from doing it. What's an emotion? It drives what you away you from doing whatever you thought you were going to do. That's an intangible force which you experience on a plane above the physical. And I think it's part of the physical. Yeah. It's sh- and now we're getting into fundamentalism. Whether or not your mind is body, or, or yeah, is exactly. your mind above body, and that's or lower body. Too complicated for this you, right just, now. just because you have a, a physical reaction, you know, side effects of the actual emotional experience itself. And that's once again getting far beyond the scope of this conversation. Oh come on! That's that's beyond the scope. Scope. We can if we exploded five minutes ago. Yeah, exactly. Well. I wish I've been trying to stick to emotions, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, we you're like, you have to start talking about, about emotions, emotions, though, right? Yeah. All right. All right. We'll, we'll just talk about what emotions are and where they come from. Uh, yeah. Dan, do you have an answer? What's an emotion? <laughs> See, I don't chemical think response. She's, he's thinking it's physical. You're thinking what it's it? metaphysical. Not corporal? Non-corporal. Yeah. Non-corporal? <laughs> So where do the emotions come from then? Are they they just existing out there and we somehow tap into them? Is there a wavelength? Well, like you said, just just talking in the Go ahead. What do you say? Go ahead. (laughs) We were talking a minute ago about the fact that there's probably colors that we can't perceive because the wavelengths are too short or too long. It's the subconscious. And we would relate Mm -hmm. that to the subconscious. That's distinctly possible. Now, I did mention briefly on our visual spectrum, because Dean was about to argue about ultraviolet, violet. And, yeah, there's probably emotions out there we are incapable on our conscious level of experiencing, or even being aware that we experience a form of it, which triggers a different emotional reaction in us, which could, if we're going to go with the symbolism of color, or could exist on those non-visible spectrums of color. Or these are emotions that we actually experience, but since we have no context of which to experience them in the physical world through our five senses, we, we don't know, you know, it's a, a subconscious emotion. That's mm-hmm. why we can see someone on the street and we hate them because of their shoes and we have no idea why, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tr- triggering they, emotions. I was gonna, and that's where I want to go. There's a lot of subconscious emotions when people go to What psychologists. causes emotion? Co- like, it's, it's a, okay, it's fight or flight. <laughs> is it really that what? simple, it's Josh? Reaction it's the reaction. Situation. Exactly. It's, a, it's what goes on is it synapse fires in your brain. You're in a situation. Let's say you're making like you're you're with a girl and you're like, oh my god, I like them. Synapse fires in your brain. There's lust. Bam. Now you're like, oh my god, now I want to fuck them, right? <laughs> and then like other situations, let's well, say you have a gun to your face. Thing. Now you're now you have a now you have surprise, anger. What the fuck? So All those synapses firing in your brain. So he's also, once again, going with the physical Go reaction, and he's saying well, even like they're an intangible force with which we tap into. I do have an idea about what emotions come from, but I want to respond to that. According to you, then, then all emotions come from a experience and reaction in, uh, with the real world. Therefore, everyone need, would need to be a little bit psychotic, because, I mean, I personally Wait, have watched, what? like, Lion King and cried, and I obviously know that talking lions is a fake cartoon. Oh, but yeah, I but mean, you're, you're, emotions you're, function you're not psychotic, though, no, that's the beautiful thing. No, well, he is, but not for that reason. <laughs> 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 As humans, we have this ability to knowingly suspend disbelief. And when we watch like something like Lion King, we become emotionally invested in it because we, our brain is like, yes, this is real, because we're suspending disbelief. No, no, that's I, exactly I, what it is. When you get engaged in something, there's, that's, that's what it's called. It's called suspension of disbelief. It's when you go, okay, this I know is impossible, but I'm going to, for the, per, for the time the being, I'm going to put that up here. of suspension of disbelief the same as I might define imagination? No, like that's, that's what it's called. And when, you're, when, you're, when you're watching a play or something, 
and you're and you you're 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 completely into the play and you're into the story and you're becoming emotionally invested in that. <coughs> what do you call suspension of disbelief? Scaf scaffolding, all that disappears. The term in in theater is called suspension of disbelief. But just because it's called in, that doesn't in, mean in literature, it's called suspension of disbelief. It, 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 and then we're arguing semantics again. I'm not really arguing. So I'm telling you the term the that I'm referencing. Okay. <coughs> I call it empathy. I, I know it's fake. I know while I'm sad that it's fake, but I can empathize with the emotion of a son losing his father. Yeah. The emotion is that emotional I invested. recognize, not the situation. Yeah, becoming emotionally invested, and your synapses are firing, and you're, mm -hmm. you, yeah, to you, for that moment, it is real. Okay. Is it possible, uh, now we, we slowly got into this a little bit later, is it possible at any moment in time yeah. for any person to not feel anything at all. Yes. Ever. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, and I, I'm with her on this one only because you guys, when I complained I felt dead, said you were obviously still feeling some negative emotions. Yeah, because it wasn't neutral. You were feeling negative. How do you feel Thank neutral no. emotion then? How do you feel no emotions at all? Emotionally numb. Right now my cat is mm -hmm. feeling sadness. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, like it being neutral, like, like, like there's no positive or negative. When you said those were the darkest times in your life, obviously you remember that negatively. Okay. So therefore, that is not well neutral. Also, so how do you not feel an emotion alive. ever? You have a alive? You have uh, yeah. Like how do you, you define alive? You, you can't define is there a point in your life because do you feel emotions while? Well, that's that's still negative though. It's not neutral. You might. No, no. I don't. You don't know that because you don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, but that's still exactly. like hyper negative. I, mean, I would think so. Yeah. Lack of yeah. Awareness, yeah. The I think experience. when your brain it's reaches a certain negative, negative it's, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's not neutral. That's still negative. Also, I would. I mean, it's happening. Other people doing the time. You remember it as a negative experience. Time. You're talking about it like time is a negative thing. Therefore, the emotion itself is neutral. It's negative. Yeah. You were like I had no emotions. Like you were like I was very alive. And I didn't have a positive like or a negative. It was more like I was just happy floating in nothing. There was literally nothing. And no, time seemed. That's numbness. That's a well, that's calmness more is an emotion. No, it's, it's not. You it felt it 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 the absence of happiness. And it wasn't no security. So no, I mean back to the. Like, well, no, yeah. Yeah. And, and, your, and your yeah. definition yeah. of life. I define life loosely as the beginning. Because what I'm saying. The beginning of something. I'm thinking a life is the beginning of something. Not positive or negative. In preparation for the transition to another middle, something. Well, a lot of is some, but yeah, not, it's like transition. not as negative. Life is whole the journey thing. to the transition. But instead, which like life itself is a series of transitions then. itself, which, 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 of existence. I think it gets to the point that, that like, in, in situations like that, I think sometimes it gets to the point yeah. that the whatever reality emotion that you're experiencing gets too strong for your consciousness, your consciousness to continue to handle. I mean, so you're that. Like, that's that's an emotion, though, for that to happen. And that's your subconscious. It's still going right. on in your subconscious part of it, but your consciousness is suppressing it so you don't have to deal with it. It's a response. Uh, according a, according uh, to Josh, well, according to me, what? Uh, according to Josh, I was still talking and stuff when I was laying on the street. I was having uh, like actual words and telling him to do stuff and whatnot. But well, from the time that the guy grabbed me and I landed on the ground to the time I was put into the ambulance, time did not exist. There was no emotion. There was no experience. So you're saying for there to be a a lack of emotion, there has to be a lack of perception of time. A lack of perception of reality, and you could even go so far as to say spirit, because apparently I physically still went on, and Josh said I was talking went on, but for me, none of that exists. It did not happen. Yeah, but it, like the thing is, it could have ha it happened in reality, physically. Yeah. physically it happened. Which could but have you been synapses firing off, and some yeah. words were coming and whatnot. But yeah. me, the the who I am, what I am, the experience, the part of your brain that 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 on. has the eye. The part of your brain that is the the sense of self. Well, I'm speaking in a metaphysical world because I believe that there is a metaphysical concept. All right. Well. Concept. Okay. So. 
So metaphysics, all right. I'm see, that's, for a see, like, it's hard, to, it's hard for me to have a conversation like that because I already, the way I see it is different. I, I know you was just about to say the way I know. I wasn't hey, going to say that. I'm looking for a segue here because Dan had something to say and we've totally cut him the fuck off. So I want you to come into the conversation. I think that, I think that there's more evidence for synapses firing in the brain than there are for the metaphysical. Uh, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> no, I'm saying that it's the, the go hand in hand. Um, yeah, and that's what I, I wasn't saying. I wasn't disagreeing with the idea of the metaphysical. I was just explaining the physical. What he said kind of mirrored something that uh, Josh had said earlier mm -hmm. about an emotion being a reaction to mm -hmm. a cause and effect. Yeah. A, an emotion is a reaction to a cause. Yep. You disagree? Mm -hmm. Does there have to... So, so, is emotion a reactionary or can emotion be preemptive? I can it exist well, before the event? Can the well, emotion trigger well, the event? You're getting into temp okay. physics. Oh. How, yeah. how is that physics? Again, people perceive Temporal. it differently. For <laughs> you didn't want to get all right, motherfucker. We're out throwing out. Now we're into what physics. Out of time, you know, you know, you know <laughs> the deep spring. What? 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 But I, I don't think that's getting into temporal physics. I think it's talking about exists as wine that is a loop. You know, it's it's okay. It's a kind of a chicken or egg question here. I mean, no, but like, no, not even that, because like, like it's reactionary. Think oh, about it. Like, oh, if if somebody does something that's going to inspire you to punch them in the face, you don't want to punch them in the face until they've done that, and then it's not a reaction. Not necessarily true. I've done this. I've walked into a room, walked down the street, and just seen someone and not liked them at all. Yeah, but that's it's a exactly. it's a reaction so to your what, whatever. Like emotion the existed before the event, or it depends on the situation. It, it, yeah, in that regard, you have to say that there's inherent emotions that come oh. from mm. past experiences, and then they. I think we did say earlier that we are yeah, born, but those are still emotions. reactions. At best, you just there. say that the they're reactionary to the original, huh? Yeah. 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 At the first time only. Everyone is taught but that's the same thing with a the emotion of some sort. Well, I would say that though, like, that not every time something with. that, like, if any time... If, if I touch fire. fire for the first time, I'm like, ah, oh, fire. I was like, ah, it's hot. You know, next time I'm going to be like, oh, fire, and back up. <laughs> only the first time does it become a reactionary... Well, I mean, it's still reactionary based on, like, let's say you do something that inspires, like, you know, somebody does something that makes you love, mm -hmm. and then you have that negative, oh, well, they leave, so now you're, you're feeling lost, or whatever, and then you get over that, and then, yeah, you're, you're weary the next time, but it's still, rea like, that love is still reactionary mm -hmm. the next time you feel it. It's just now you're, you're like, oh, I remember that loss, though, so I don't want to get into that. Like... That's it's still it's still reactionary the next time you feel it. You're just you're just now more aware of how to you know, now you have more So pop, emotion yeah. can only be reactionary. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I'm saying that emotion inherently is reactionary. I think everything is a reaction to So is that wait, yeah. isn't that the same as saying only it is or in there is no more actions anymore. There's so wait, he's reaction. saying once that you have the yeah. experience the for the first time, you react to that with the appropriate emotion. But then mm -hmm. that sensory data is saved and stored. Yeah. That, for whenever you encounter an experience that's similar to that one, that's what triggers that past emotion. Yeah. So that, that's what like fears of agoraphobia and specific yeah. Yeah. stuff. I don't know who that was. Somebody from from said emotion is a cycle. Okay? Yeah. So it's life. Well, yeah, every, so yeah. I did listen to this. Okay. So, can life exist without emotion? No. Uh, again, you have to uh, define what life is. I mean, if I you define it simply as life, a you can be a single cell organism and not have emotion, it's still alive. Okay. And it goes through a cycle. <laughs> so, but I define so life, we life as on, on a biological level, or are we no, talking about I'm life, talking on life on a universal level? Life as life as a, as humans in this planet right now experience it. Mm, what about rocks? No. Are you okay. uh, like planet? 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 Dead planet. planet? I consider life basically the as the beginning and the transition. The beginning and the time between to the next transition. See, the, the well, then a rock, a mountain is alive. And a mountain is alive. It has a life, but not as we define it. Not as organic beings experience life. See, so I just the life experience, though, based on this <laughs> definition, the life experience of everything is going to be different. And mm -hmm. not all of them. Based on what's going on here. Life does not necessarily mean consciousness in my definition. And okay, well then, by that definition, most things that don't even have emotion. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that life is emotion is not necessary for life. And I'm saying that emotion comes from uh, 
Does death have any emotions? The East will, if that's what you want to call it. For example, like he, well, like we were talking about earlier, emotions are well, I mean, you believe in what is your transition? T- I, I, I'm sorry, I cut you well, off. Well, if Finish you mean... Oh, or are you done? Uh, I was saying that emotion is energy, right? Like we were talking mm-hmm. about earlier, how it triggers and that's what allows you to experience and everything. Well, there are unimaginable amounts of energy, unimaginable amounts of different light spectrums that we can't perceive and everything, which is the, uh, the <laughs> planets or different mm-hmm. types of stars that give off different kinds of radiation. There's nebulas that what mm-hmm. stars are formed and born that are, have specific types of energy to those nebula, right? Mm-hmm. Now, in solar rays, for example, we travel an extremely, you know, extreme distance before they're dissipating. Same thing with microwaves, same thing with most types of energy. It will travel a, a certain amount of distance. Now, emotions could be reactions to, say, solar waves. Now, we call it chemical because, you know, mm-hmm. being exposed to sunlight can make you feel happier. That's a type of energy influencing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there could be energy coming from a distant star or other nebulas that's been traveling for thousands and thousands of years to hit us. Vitamin D. The, you know, what? Different D. types D. of energy can influence us in different oh, ways. Oh, and I'm, I'm saying that emotions okay. come from uh, outside the physical world. Mm. It, see, and this is going to get into another everything. physical versus metaphysical conversation. What is yeah. metaphysical? Uh, anything beyond our perception of reality. Okay. Yeah, it's it's essentially like, yeah, like it's, no. Yeah. I don't think will is a pa- is passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first we'd have to identify what will is. You, you know, I, I actually oh, it just occurred to me. What? In the because uh, we're taking all these rings and the emotions from the spectrum of the Greenland universe. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing a thing like, is will even an emotion? I, I'm not sure. I don't think it's got anything to do with passion. So we got white, which is not an emotion. We got black, which is not an emotion. And then in the middle, we got will. Which may or may not be. Yes. So we're assuming that will is an emotion from the emotional spectrum. Uh. But because you can will yourself to take the trash out and be absolutely not passionate about it at all. Yeah, and you could also, like... I'm not passionate about taking a piss in the morning, but I will myself to <laughs> take a piss. And yeah, like, and then, like, you can will yourself to do anything on that spectrum. Exactly. Like so, anger, you can will, will yourself kick my ass. So will has got to be something like just else just driving than passion. Force. All right, so I'm going to segue this just a bit. I'm going to end the conversation with a statement I just made a second mm-hmm. ago, kind of got slightly glazed over. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to move into something personal for all of us. Does death have an emotion?